So last week I was supposed to conclude uh, our, <coughs> excuse me, I was supposed to conclude our series on waiting for Jesus, uh, and I'm going to do that this week. Uh, I know that this is, we're after Christmas, um, Jesus uh, metaphorically has already come, baby Jesus has come, uh, and, and we're after Christmas, but I want to conclude that series because I, this lesson I think is a good lesson to end the year on, okay? Um, it serves, the text for this lesson serves as the benediction to the book of Romans, and I think it would be good to serve as the benediction for the year of 2023, uh, so if you have your Bibles, turn them to Romans chapter 16. That's where we'll be today. Romans chapter 16. We're going to go back and forth between Romans 16 and Luke chapter 1. But if you would, please turn over to Romans chapter 16 in your Bibles. And uh, we'll dive into the text in just a moment. So in this series, we've been talking about waiting for the Lord. Okay? Waiting for the coming Christ. And, and as we wait, as we wait for the Lord, as we wait uh, for the, the Christmas season, as we wait for uh, us to think about the birth of Christ, uh, and then ultimately as we wait for the return of our Lord and the new heavens and new earth. As we wait, uh, we're melting in repentance toward him so that we can be mold, molded by him. We're making sure that we are hearing him above the volume of every, everything else and rejoicing in worship toward him as our Savior who will restore our fortunes. I want us to look at a final passage that serves as the benediction to Paul's letter to the Romans and also as a benediction to the year of 2023. Romans chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Romans 16, 25 through 27. I hope you'll turn your Bibles over there. I hope you'll look at those verses. We're going to read them in just a moment. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for the long ages but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, that is the end of the book of Romans, probably one of the most important books in our Bible. Uh, they're all important, but Romans is particularly important because of the themes that it covers. But that is the, that, that's the end of the book. That's the conclusion of the book of Romans. Paul, once he's, he's, he's revealed all of this to them, he's preached all of this to them, he's written these things to them, he's revealed the gospel to them so that the obedience of faith would come about. And that's what we want, right? Okay. The, anytime we're, we're talking about the Lord Jesus... We're talking about following God. We're talking about serving God. We're talking about uh, being Christians. We're talking about the coming of the Lord. Uh, what we really want is that obedience of faith would come about. That's what we want. We want our faith to move us to obey God. We want to be moved in our faith that it's so much that we would obey God and do everything that he asks of us. That is our goal. That is what we want. And this text talks about that. He, he talks about that, about bringing about the obedience of faith. And Paul says that God will strengthen us to bring about this obedience of faith according to three things. And so that's what I want us to focus on from this text today three things the first thing is strengthened according to the gospel of Jesus Christ strengthened according to the gospel of Jesus Christ Paul says verse 25 now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according three times he says according okay according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ this specifically is the good news of Jesus. Gospel means good news. But what is the good news of Jesus? What, what really is the good news of Jesus? And furthermore, how does it move us toward obedience? How does good news, how does the gospel move us toward obedience? 
Those are, are things we need to think about. And, and I think a really good way to think about these things, to think about the, how the gospel moves us toward obedience, I think a really good way for us to talk about it is to go back to Mary's story when she's approached by the angel in Luke chapter 1. So put a marker, if you have a marker, if you're using a physical Bible. I mean, I suppose you can bookmark a, a digital Bible too. Put a marker there uh, at Romans chapter 16 and, and turn over to Luke chapter 1. We're going to be going back and forth in this lesson quite a bit. Turn over to Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 26. Verse 26, Luke chapter 1, starting with verse 26. We're going to notice uh, what the good news is based on this passage. Okay? Luke 1, 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and of the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying. And tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Now notice verses 32 and 33. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Now, I don't know that Mary fully understood the full significance of this. In fact, when you go into Luke chapter 2, it says multiple times she treasured these things up in her heart. I mean, she was thinking about these things. She didn't totally and completely, I don't think, understand exactly what was going on. But this would have been good news to any Jew. To any child of Israel, this would have been good news. The good news of Jesus is that God created a kingdom in which he would rule and humans would reign with him. That's what Adam and Eve were. They were supposed to be his undergovernors who who named things and, and took care of things and ruled over things. That's what we were supposed to do. Wouldn't it be nice if we were just all really good managers? Okay. I mean, like God created us to be, we just, you know, we just managed the world and took care of things and everything was all right and everything was hunky-dory. But that would be really, really nice. That would be very nice. But eventually, uh, and, and eventually we would become glorified into sons of God. That was the plan. But through the rebellion of angels and humans, humans lost that right and were banished from God's presence. But God would not let that distance stand. And this is the good news. He chose Abraham and his eventual family to be his treasured possession. And eventually a king arose from Abraham's family, David, who was after God's heart. And God promised that David's descendant would rule the world from his throne and bring his people back into his presence by atoning for their sins, making them holy and giving them the right to be called sons of God again. This is the announcement of the birth of this king. This is the announcement of this good news. That the the banishment that human beings experience from God's presence because of their rebellion, that it was not permanent. That God had done something about it. That God had chosen a, a, a nation, and he had chosen a king within that nation, And he had chosen a descendant of that king who would be the king who would take care of the sins of the world and bring us back into God's presence. And so this is the good news. This is what the angel tells uh, Mary when she's worried. She's afraid. Ah, there's an angel. And she's worried and she's afraid. She doesn't know what's going on. And the angel is trying to say to her, no, 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 no. Mary, this is a good thing. The thing that you've been waiting for, the thing that you've been longing for, the thing that you've been waiting for, the thing that you've been looking for your whole life, that your people have been looking for their whole lives, it is happening and it's happening with you. You're the one. And so the question, how does good news strengthen us toward an obedient faith? 
And I think the answer to that is that the good news should strengthen you toward an obedient faith because it shows you that Jesus is the answer to the world's woes. Jesus is the answer to the world's woes. He completes our history and gives us hope for the future. Okay, If you have all of your options for hope for the future laid out in front of you, okay, all of your options, hope for the future, uh, do nothing. Okay, That's an option. You just be nihilists and, and do nothing. Okay, um, Trust science and that we're going to go and live on Mars one day. Okay, That's an option, I guess. Um, uh, you know, pick one of the world's religions. You know, maybe I'll be reincarnated as an animal or something, and that's my, my hope for the future, okay? Uh, or, you know, we have all of these options. We have all of these thoughts of, of what's our hope for the future? What, 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 are, what are our options? Out of all of the options, honestly, I, I've, I've read about a lot of them. This is the one. This is the one. Jesus makes sense of our world. He makes sense, uh, the, the story of, of God's word makes sense of our world, why there is so much corruption and why there is so much evil and what a, a God of the Bible is going to do about it. And pledging allegiance to Jesus because he gives us the good news, the best news, just makes sense. I mean, think about it, okay? Okay. It's, it's about to be 2024. It's going to be election season, right? Okay. It's going, to be, it's going to be an election year, and it's a leap year, right? Isn't election year always the same year as leap year? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's an election year. Um, we're going to be, uh, you know, looking for uh, another president, and we're going to be listening to candidates, right? Okay. And they're going to be telling us, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to fulfill this promise, and I'm going to take care of these people, and I'm going to do this. And, and we listen to those things, and we, we, we listen to see if we hear ourselves in those, right? Is, is he going to help me? Is he going to make decisions for me? Is he going to be the best choice for me and for my family or she? Okay? Is this person going to be the best choice for me and my family? We understand that concept. Now take that and put it on a grander scale. Who brings the good news for me and my family and all families of the earth? And that is Jesus. That moves us toward an obedient faith. But the, the good news really goes further than this story. It is also a revelation of a long mystery. When I was a kid, I loved to watch the show Unsolved Mysteries. Did y'all ever watch that? Okay. Uh, I don't know why, I just, I really like to watch it, I guess I would like, I don't know, it's kind of creepy, watching it as a kid, it's kind of creepy, unsolved mysteries, um, but I, I love to watch that, and, and throughout your Bible, there is a mystery, okay, we don't recognize it as a mystery, because we're reading it after the fact, okay, but for, for the people in the Bible, it was a mystery, who's going to be saved, who's going to be saved, and so Paul says this back at, at Romans, chapter, Romans chapter 16. Put your marker there at Luke chapter 1. At Romans chapter 16 he says, uh, Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed through the prophetic writings, has been made known to all nations. It's not just according to the gospel, but it's according to the mystery that has been revealed. The revelation of the mystery. What is this mystery? Now, uh, to talk about this, I want us to go back to Luke chapter 1. So put your marker there at Romans 16. Go back to Luke chapter 1. And I want you specifically to notice verse 33. So we, we've read all this text. The angel comes to Mary. Uh, Mary is scared. The angel tells her the good news. Um, but I want you to notice Luke chapter 1, verse 33. Talking about Jesus, the angel says, <coughs> He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Now, honestly, this, 
unless you understand what house of Jacob means, this is a little bit of a mystery. Okay? If you just came into the Bible, you started reading from Luke chapter 1, and you had no idea what house of Jacob was. This might be a mystery. Well, maybe you'd go to the, the beginning of the Bible, and you'd start reading, and you'd find out that Jacob was who? He was Israel. Okay? He was Abraham's grandson. Okay? But that's still a mystery. Like, what does that have to do with me? What does that have to do uh, with good news for all people? So the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made to all nations goes all the way back to the house of Jacob. Jacob, better known as Israel, was the grandson of Abraham and Abraham had, made, uh, had a promise made to him by the Lord. If you remember, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. In you, he says this to Abraham, Jacob's grandfather. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That is the promise. It wasn't just Jacob's house. It wasn't just Abraham's house. It wasn't just uh, the, the Israelites. It wasn't just that select group of people. In you, all families of the earth will be blessed. The fulfillment of this promise is the great mystery that was revealed in Jesus. Now, after the fact, we look back and we're like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay? But for the people of this time, this was a mystery. His kingdom would have no end, as the text is. Of his kingdom, there will be no end. His kingdom would have no end. It would not end with ethnic Jews. It would not end at any racial or sociopolitical or class or gender or wealth border. All people, big and small, would have the opportunity to bow the knee to King Jesus and enter the kingdom. You see, at the Tower of Babel, God had disinherited all other nations, and he had chosen Israel for himself. The mystery of the gospel is that God all the time was working to bring all those nations back into his inheritance. That's the mystery. You might, if you want to, you might read uh, Ephesians chapter 3. We're not going to go over there, but Ephesians chapter 3, Paul talks about this exact same thing, the mystery that's been revealed. He talks about that. So if you want to do further reading on that, Ephesians chapter 3. So, but what does the re- revelation of this mystery, how does it strengthen us toward obedient faith? And, and, and the answer is that it, it strengthens you toward an obedient faith because it shows you that Jesus is the champion of all people, even you. Jesus is a champion of all people, even you. No matter how bad you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter uh, what you've said, no matter the, the life that you've lived, Jesus can be your champion. No matter what background you came from, no matter who you are, Jesus can be your champion. Have y'all ever heard the story This is one that shocks people, and I've told this before. Have y'all ever heard the story of Jeffrey Dahmer becoming a Christian in prison? Y'all ever heard that story? I've shared it with you before. And I I know that people, really, it's hard for us to think about this because what Jeffrey Dahmer did was, was heinous, evil, disgusting, awful. And so the thought that there would be redemption for some like, something like, someone like that and that a person like that might be in heaven, that's hard for people. But that's the gospel. That's the good news. That Jesus is the champion for all. Even those nations that he disinherited at the Tower of Babel that he said enough is enough. He found a way to bring them back in. And that ought to move us toward obedience to him. He is the best candidate for my future hope. Because he can be my champion too. He can be my champion too. 
the good news and the solved mystery, I think, really become helpful in moving us toward, toward obedient faith when we realize that the eternal God is commanding these promises to become a reality in your life. I want you to notice back at Romans chapter 16. Back at Romans chapter 16 in the benediction to the book of Romans. He says, Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel, to the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations. And then number three, according to the command of the eternal God. According to the command of the eternal God. I want us to go back to Luke chapter 1 and see what is so great about the command of the eternal God. I want you to notice the words in here in Luke chapter 1, verses 31 through 37. Luke 1, 31 through 37. And behold, he's talking to, the angel's talking to Mary again, still. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the son of the most high God. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative of Elizabeth is in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. What makes all of this amazing? The good news the revelation of the mystery, the fact that, that, that God can be my champion too, that Jesus can be my champion too. What makes all of this amazing is that the eternal God of the universe is the one who is making the promises. And when God wills something, I, I wasn't waiting for that, but thank you. <laughs> okay, And when God wills something to happen, it happens. He does it. He does what he says he's going to do. The command of the eternal God should strengthen you toward an obedient faith. Because, first of all, it is a fearful thing to ignore and disobey the command of the eternal God. Okay? It is a fearful thing to ignore and disobey the command of the eternal God. Number one. I don't think you want to do that. But number two, the promises he has made are subject to his will. And when the king speaks his will, it is carried out to the fullest. And so when he said to Mary, your son will be the son of the most high. And he will take away the sins of the world. He would surely do it because God said it. The good news and the revealed mystery of God's eternal purpose being backed up with the command of the eternal God ought to move us to an obedient faith. Back at Romans chapter 16, notice what all of these things point toward. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel to the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for the long ages but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings that has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to do what? To bring about the obedience of faith. To bring about the obedience of faith. Go back over to Luke chapter 1. I want you to notice, Mary, she sees all of this. She hears all of this. The gospel, the, the, this, uh, this angel reveals to her the, the gospel, the good news, uh, reveals to her the mystery. This angel explains to her that all of this is according to the will of God. I want you to notice what she does at the very end. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. 
she was moved to faithful obedience. And that's what God wants for you and for me. For us to hear the gospel and understand this mystery that's been revealed that we can be saved too. And for us to take seriously the command of the eternal God and for us to be moved to a faithful obedience. So as we close out 2023 and we move toward 2024, tonight, tomorrow, I want you to think about your obedience to God. I want you to think about uh, whether or not you've been obeying God in your life. I want you to think about whether or not uh, your faith has moved you to obey the gospel and, and to be, be a child of God and to, be, uh, to, to repent of your sins and be baptized into Christ and, and, and to live a life for him, to live a life all for his glory, all for his glory. The end of that Romans text, Romans chapter 16 text, says, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. When we hear the gospel and understand the mystery and obey the command of God toward an obedient faith, it brings glory to God. It brings glory to God. Let's make that our goal in 2024. Let's make that our goal in 2024. If you need something today, we want to offer you an invitation. We have a tradition here. We sing a song. You can come sit on one of these front pews and talk with us if you need something, if you need prayers, if you need anything at all, come uh, up here. If you don't feel comfortable coming up here, we'll have an elder standing at the back. You can talk to, to one of our elders. Uh, whatever it is that you need, don't hesitate. Come now as we stand and sing.